In recent decades, millions of people have drifted away from Jesus and their Catholic faith. Sadly, many may never find their way back. I'm Tom Peterson, and I believe that God has called me to use my background in media to be a catalyst in the new evangelization. Our organization produces inspiring and creative evangelization messages that have helped lead hundreds of thousands of inactive Catholics, converts, agnostics, and atheists home to Jesus and His Holy Church. Join us as we travel across North America to bring you stories of heartbreak, redemption, and transformation as the Holy Spirit leads His people home. God has an extraordinary plan for each of our lives. He wants us to spend eternity in heaven with Him and bring as many people with us as possible. This is Catholics Come Home. Now, I welcome you to my home to hear their amazing stories. Welcome to Catholics Come Home. In this episode, we'll meet a married couple in their mid-50s. She was raised in Youngstown, Ohio in a Lebanese Catholic family, but fell away from organized religion while in college. He was a practicing Presbyterian who grew up in Buffalo, New York. After meeting in college, this married couple began their amazing adventure home to the Catholic faith. Like everybody else in this series, today's guest came home to the Catholic Church by responding to a call of the Holy Spirit. I'd like you to meet Michael and Lori Carlton. Mike and Lori, welcome to Catholics Come Home and welcome to our home. Thank, Thank you. you. Our viewers love to hear stories about people's childhood, their faith formation. So we'll start with that. Lori, if you would start, tell us about your youth. I grew up in Youngstown, Ohio, a Maronite Catholic. Oh. My father was Lebanese, my mother was German. And Which food was better, Lebanese or German? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's tough to say. Tough. They're both delicious. Lebanese. <laughs> but our uh, small Maronite community was our whole family, aunts, uncles, cousins. So going to church was a beautiful experience. We had wonderful faith formation in the Sunday school program, and it was really a joyful experience. And Mike, tell us about your young days. Grew up in Buffalo, New York. Mm -hmm. um, Presbyterian background. Huh? Sort of a nominal Christian background. We did all the things that Protestants do, um, Christmas and Easter, occasional Sundays, we didn't go all the time. Youth clubs, some Bible retreats, but uh, again, not a huge part of my growing up. Um, memories growing up, my dad played for the Buffalo Bills, so oh, we kind of grew up in wow. an NFL family, and that That's was cool. sort of a big highlight for us, Yeah, uh, more so than, than church specific. Most popular kid in the neighborhood, huh? Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> was faith really important to your family, or was it more just you checked the boxes and went through the... Emotions. I'll speak for myself. It was important to be in church and be part of a church. Yes. And uh, it didn't form me as much as I would have liked because when I went to college, I kind of dropped it. Mm. And Lori, you were very faithful in that Maronite, Maronite Lebanese community as a young child. Did you keep that strong faith in college or did your faith wane a bit? Well, it waned. <laughs> uh, and when we, as we got older, we moved to Cincinnati, oh. a different town, and the Maronite Church was too far, so we went to the Roman Church, and uh, it did wane a bit. Mm -hmm. But one thing's for sure, we never missed Mass. Good for ever. your family. God yes. bless them. So what happened in college that you started drifting away from faith, and how did you become more lukewarm in your faith? I would say just simply uh, uh, being a bit of a rebel and deciding that I'll decide what I, I want to do. I'll decide if I would like to go to church on Sunday. How novel, a college student <laughs> saying that. Never heard that before. No, but I did have a roommate who influenced me tremendously. She is the youngest of 10 children, oh. uh, a very faithful Catholic uh, family. And she was involved in uh, teaching or leading other Catholic groups within college students. And she was very influential to me. And we would go to Mass together, St. Mary's. Beautiful. And um, I'm very grateful for that. And, and Mike, did you attend the same college? We did, Miami of Ohio. Uh, I played football there and really just cared about sports and having fun. Co uh, church was not part of it at all. Mm. Coincidentally, the first Catholic church I ever set foot in was St. Mary's in Oxford, Ohio with her. We were dating and she was going and I wanted to date her, so that's kind of a ticket to go. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> but grew up around Irish Catholics my whole life in Buffalo, uh, but always wondered what it was like to be in a Catholic church and that gave me my first opportunity, college. Did you find Catholicism intriguing 
or were you a diehard Protestant who said, I'll never become Catholic? No, my family was not anti-Catholic at all. We grew up around Irish Catholics. Yeah. Um, it was intriguing to me, the traditions, watching all the things they did, mm -hmm. fasting, the first communions, and I was intrigued by a lot of the family functions that we yes. didn't have. Um, but that's as far as it went. No anti-Catholicism at that time. At that time. So did you end up, get, you, did you get married during college or after college? And right after college. I graduated in 1990 and 1991 we were married. I was 22. Awesome. Right and you away. had an interesting career right after college, didn't you? Yes. Well, I did work, but um, I realized that there had to be more to life, so I became an NFL cheerleader in my wow. 20s. And we were married and Mike was very supportive and we had a lot of fun in our 20s. Uh, it was a very good time without children. Without children. At this point, were you attending any church? We were church shopping. You know, at that point we were married, uh, to flip back into 91, we were married in the Catholic Church, but we decided because it was an interfaith marriage, a mixed marriage, we didn't have the Eucharist oh. at, uh, at the, on our wedding day, something I would later regret. Right. But um, we church shopped, Catholic Church, Episcopal, Presbyterian. We were going. Uh, it wasn't that big of a deal for us until we started having, having kids. And you were on the road a lot, traveling with your job as an NFL cheerleader. I imagine you used that as an excuse to go to whatever church you wanted to a lot. or not go to church. Mm -hmm. because that was just part of your lifestyle for those many years. Yeah, the church thing became a big deal when we started having kids. In a moment, find out what prompted Mike and Lori to discover more about the Catholic faith. I was praying to God to show me something because the church issue was becoming stressful. For victory in life, we've got to keep focused on the goal, and the goal is heaven. The key to winning is choosing to do God's will and love others with all you've got. Sacrifice, discipline, and prayer are essential. We gain strength through God's Word, and we receive grace from the sacraments. And when we fumble due to sin, and it's going to happen, confession puts us back on the field. So if you haven't been going to Mass weekly, get back in the game. We're saving your seat on the starting bench this Sunday. Welcome home. So Mike and Lori, at this point, you're having fun traveling the world, you're, or at least traveling the U.S., you're church shopping, you're kind of exploring young, young life together, and then you have a child, and you start thinking, what are we going to expose our child to? Which faith? And I think, Mike, I remember you telling me that you said, I'll be happy to raise the kids Catholic, but I'll never become Catholic. Yeah, that's what happened. Uh, we were going to the Catholic Church uh, along with other churches. Actually, our first child in 97 was baptized in a Presbyterian church, oh. and our second child was baptized in a Catholic church. So we were in very much a, a, in a state of, we had a church thing going on uh, at, at the time in the late 90s. We did, we were, uh, although we went to church every Sunday, neither of us put our foot down. And mm -hmm. uh, it was a bit stressful at times, but when I was pregnant with the second child, I told Mike that it really meant the world to me to raise our family Catholic and go the Catholic route. And he was very supportive. Good. Supportive of that, but I let, let her know, uh, of course, um, I will never convert, just to let you know. Um, <laughs> but we'll go through the Catholic rituals and sacraments, but I'm never going to come in. Uh, it was nice that you were supportive, at least. For famous the last words. So, obviously, you're here today. You did come in. What was that spark, or what are the sparks that helped lead you into Catholicism? Yeah, we moved from Ohio to Atlanta in the late 90s, pregnant with our first. I thought we could leave all the Catholics behind. We're moving <laughs> to the Bible Belt where the Protestants are. We're not going to see any Catholics, and we can just be Presbyterian. And little did I know. We met some neighbors who were from Ohio, of ah, all places. Wonderful. All Catholic. Yeah. And we decided, <laughs> let's start a prayer group. Well, it became a rosary group. And uh, my dad really uh, influenced us kids with the rosary growing up. So it was special to me. And um, we had a rosary group at our house uh, every week. You did. Yeah, I was I gonna say, how do yeah. you feel about that? No, right? I was, uh, that she was having a rosary group with these women. I had office days sometimes in the house and I would sort of listen in. I thought it was kind of a strange thing. I became sort of anti mm -hmm. at, the, at the time. We had now a couple kids. We were agreeing to go to the Catholic Church, but I really wasn't uh, bought in on the whole deal at that point. So something obviously led you into the Catholic Church. Uh, what were those influences that made you take a second look? We were on vacation, uh, 4th of July, 
probably year 2000-ish, and I was praying to God to show me something because the church issue was becoming stressful. Yeah. And lo and behold, within a few months, um, she pointed to Scott Hahn was coming to oh. Atlanta and uh, she wanted to go. And I said, well, I kind of want to go because he's a former Presbyterian minister sure. speaking on his conversion. At that point, I wanted to kind of hear him out. Yeah. And that was the beginning, of the, uh, the, the beginning for me. Good. And did you read his book, Rome Sweet Home? I did. Yeah, a number of books. And did something change in your heart when you read that? Or were you still kind of on your journey for truth? No, it changed my whole life. It changed me to, to look at the church fathers, the history. Intellectually, I completely converted. It made sense to me. And I love tradition. Grew up watching the Catholics in Buffalo, all the traditions. Yeah. Now I knew where they came from, history of the church. And I was completely bought in. So converted in 2002. So at this point, your family's all Catholic, you're both mm -hmm. practicing Catholics, and life went on without any challenges, your marriage was great, and we're here today to just talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> you would think so. You would think so. Uh, on paper, everything at that point, there's no more church thing, now we have kids, we're in, a, in the South, we're enjoying life, um, we're all Catholic. We yeah. had a tight-knit group of friends who we said the rosary with, and all the children. And I was a part of this a one month this for, point. goodness, 10 years. Yeah, I decided to jump in on this uh, we one. Were, we Catholic. were all in. And this is the time you had a job as VP of International State, and you were traveling the world, right? That became the big next phase issue for us. Um, I took on a promotion to California. I was traveling every week, five days a week. I was away from the family, four kids at home, very young. And... This is when our marriage hit a crisis moment. Yes, it was hard as a stay-at-home mom of four young children to be at my very best. And I did find that I put all of my eggs into the mother basket. Sure. And um, I didn't realize, I didn't realize uh, what was happening uh, to our marriage. And we needed to, we needed to make it right. I put all my eggs in the work basket and started uh, being slave to the workplace. and. Yeah. I'd come in and be the, you know, try to be the clown dad, fun dad on the weekends, but I wasn't there during the week. It became stressful. Yeah. And, and life was good, money was good, things mm -hmm. were good, but the, yes. the marriage was suffering. How long did it take you to realize we got a serious problem here and how serious was it? Yeah, it didn't take us long, that's for sure. Yeah, <laughs> it, was, no. it was hard and fierce, but it was It hit, it it hit pretty hard. So mm -hmm. uh, Easter 04, mm -hmm. praying on the same beach, ironically, that I prayed to be led to the Catholic Church, yes. same beach, prayed about why marriage is now stressful. I'm Catholic, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. We're Catholic, we have a Catholic mm -hmm. family. Church is part of our family. I'm doing really well at work. What yeah, gives? What gives yeah. And I realized that Christ was not part of things from my perspective. It was more an intellectual conversion, not a spiritual one. Uh -huh. We kind of pushed Christ, to, I kind of pushed Christ aside from my perspective. Mm -hmm. You went through the motions, but you didn't make them the center of your life and your and family. Yeah. I realized that I wasn't the best, like I said, the wife I could be, and mm -hmm. I knew I could do better. Mm -hmm. And um, we both made a commitment to ourselves that we would do better. Yeah, we had permanence in our families. My parents had a, just had their 60th wedding anniversary. Mm -hmm. Her parents had their 50th. There's a lot of permanence in marriage around us, and I couldn't understand why it was so hard. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And oftentimes, uh, a mother will put, like you said, all of her eggs in the kid basket, mm -hmm. and, and a dad wants to provide all his eggs, and you don't realize that you, you have to help each other. I and mean, part of your vocation is helping each other to heaven, mm -hmm. and, and a strong marriage is, is, is a great testimony for the kids and family. Mm -hmm. So it's all part of the, mm -hmm. the, uh, the plan, God's plan. You realize you had a problem. How did God help you solve that problem? We knew right away. We were hit hard. Yeah. And we made a commitment to each other. Immediately we re renewed our renewed vows, our vows. Uh, in, in church mm -hmm. with a priest and all of our, at that time, four small children. I was, preg I was immediately got pregnant yeah. with the uh, fifth child. Mm -hmm. And uh, we knew we were going to make a difference. We decided we would move to a new house and start over. Start, um, cut, cut, cut it clean. We just really dropped everything and started fresh. Beautiful. It was a complete renewal, and for me, Catholicism sunk in because I had converted intellectually. I read the early church fathers. I, I knew the apologetics, but the spiritual part of the faith really came out of the permanence in the sacrament of marriage, and now it was time to live that and, and, and try to be that to others, and, and namely our family, ourselves, and then 
and then outwardly. And interestingly, when the Holy Spirit came back to our family, our house, even though I think the Holy Spirit was always there, we could see it in each other's eyes. Yes. We could see it. It was sincere. It was authenticity mm -hmm. there. Yes. Not just going through the motions or being polite or being cordial with each other. You really did care and love for each other. That's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah, the Holy Spirit never leaves. He just sits quietly in the corner while we do our goofy stuff and then when we're ready to listen, he, he, we hear him again. He's always there talking in a small voice, but we're just too busy and too noisy, I think. It's, yes. that, that's exactly yes. right. It's been amazing since then what's happened. You know, our marriage has never been stronger and, and bonded closer together, more kids. You know, we had, you know, six kids in nine years and, and we started doing, working in a marriage ministry and church and just doing different things to try yeah. to let people know that if and when you have a marriage crisis, a rut, it's going to happen, there's a way out of it Yes. and give it a second look. We've only got about a minute left for this segment, but tell us more about the marriage ministry you started at your parish and why you felt God led you, obviously with this experience, to, to do this to help others. Well, we felt that if anybody could go through this and, and come out of it, that as we did, that many others could do the same. Yeah. Lots of times you don't realize you're hitting a crisis. Right. And we wanted to help others who were going through the motions to identify red flags so they could challenge, be challenged and, and come forward. And know there's a way out. Yes. I mean, a lot of people say, hey, it just seems too desperate. I don't think it's gonna work. And the world will tell them it's not gonna work. You're absolutely take, take right. Take the easy way out, and it's not the easy way. It's actually the harder way. See the red flags before the crisis, yes. but if you're in a crisis, there's a way out. Yeah. And that's the, that was the, the ministry we built up, um, really played up on marriage being a covenant, not a contract. And you called it Marriage is Our Covenants. Mac. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mac, yeah. And what fruit have you seen from that? You don't have to get into specific people, but what fruit have you seen from that? It's been amazing. Yeah, we've had people very close to us in the next four or five years after, after uh, we started the, the ministry um, come to us with similar problems, resentment, take each other for granted, marriages on the rocks, moving out, all kinds of stories. And two specifically, uh, two people came to us. We yes. met with them, prayed together, counseled together. They're still married now. Praise God. Um, a few have not made it. Yeah. Uh, it's been a it's been an open bag, but it's it's availed us to be show, share our story with others to see if it would help. That's wonderful. And you realize too that the world is eager to say, kick him out, Hunt. kick her yeah. out, uh, but it's not often that people will come and t tell the truth. Yeah. And so that's what we try to do. Mm -hmm. And both sets of parents set that example for you. So you had it in your heart Absolutely. not to quit. So God bless your parents' marriages uh, for setting that bar. And you're doing the same now for your children. We praise God for that. Yes. Absolutely. We do. Coming up, you'll hear the conclusion of Mike's journey into Catholicism and Lori's return to her Catholic roots. We felt the love of Christ. We felt the Holy Spirit. We felt prayers. I don't know how else to explain it, but to say that we felt it. We all know children have a natural innocence and a sense of wonder. Yet our world is full of distractions that can pull families in the wrong direction. But with the help of God and a church family, your children can grow in the security of faith, hope, and love. Weekly Mass provides that critical faith foundation needed in life. So if your family hasn't been to Mass in a while, we'd like to invite you home. Discover more at catholicscomehome.org. So we praise God that your whole family is Catholic, that you've uh, worked through some marital challenges and actually started a marriage ministry to help other people who may feel there is no way out, to show them that with God all good things are possible, to strengthen marriages. Your marriage, well not your marriage, but let's say your family was tested with a real uh, kick in the teeth a couple of years ago. Tell us about what happened with one of your sons. Our fifth child, Raymond, who uh, we actually got pregnant with uh, when our marriage was uh, being renewed, um, was in a golf cart accident uh, with uh, three other boys his age. He was in the eighth grade at the time. And I was called to uh, immediately come see, having no idea what had happened. But he was hurt pretty bad. He was life flighted. Life flighted. Oh, he had to be in very desperate shape to be life flighted. He almost died on the, on the road in the golf Oof. cart tip, his head, head first in the curb. So he almost died on, on the road. 
There's a lot of miracles around that. So head injuries he, are very serious. Head injuries, yeah, they, they see 20 of these a year at the, at the trauma center in Atlanta, but they were surprised he made it off the road into the ambulance. Uh, later that evening, worst evening in my life, first uh, ER that they, tra they, they took him to by ambulance, he was too bad. Oh. Cracked ribs, shoulder broken, spine broke, uh, cracked spine fractures everywhere, abrasions, and, and of course, open head trauma. So they needed to life flight him downtown. And oh. when, the, when the helicopter took off, she was in it. I'm in the car trying to get through traffic to meet them. Most helpless moment of my whole life. My wife and child, who's on the brink, being life flighted, I'm in traffic. I didn't know what to do. Yeah. I was panicked because I felt completely helpless. Interestingly, one week before this happened, I was driving down uh, the highway with three of my children and the helicopter was flying overhead and landed on the top of the children's hospital. And I said to the kids, look at that. Let's say Hail Mary, somebody is, um, yeah. this is critical. And not knowing that one week later, I would be in that helicopter. Needing the Hail Mary from someone else passing. By. And I knew I was mm. getting it. I knew it. We, we felt the love of Christ. We felt the Holy Spirit. We felt prayers. I don't know how else to explain it, but to say that we felt it. One reason I'm thankful you're sharing this story is that so many of us would think it's our worst nightmare to have a child either die or get into a critical situation. And it really tests faith. Some people say, I abandoned God because he didn't have the outcome I wanted. Others will say, well, we got through that, but it was because of a good doctor. Tell, tell the audience a little bit who may be facing a challenge, who might face a challenge down the road, what you've learned about God through that circumstance. We only have about two minutes left, but tell me how your faith actually increased and how God works through those very challenging things, whether it had one outcome or the other. My advice would be stay close to the church. Yeah. Get to know your priests mm -hmm. because they're there for you. When I was in traffic crying, and my wife is in the helicopter with our son, and we didn't know whether he'd make it or not. Yeah. I was begging God, take me. I didn't know what to say. So I had an inclination, call Father Martin, yeah. good friend of ours, yeah. priest friend. I called Father Martin, he said, I'll be there in 20 minutes. I don't even know what he was doing. He met down there, prayed over the whole OR, ER, gave Raymond a rosary from Jerusalem, put it in his, his palm, and he, he told me, Mike, this can be a moment of grace I know you're panicked. Trust the Lord. This can be a moment of grace. And that calmed me down. And I, I credit him to this day. Yeah. He was like an angel. Yeah. He really was. Yeah. I feel the Holy Spirit is, is my armor and um, the rosary is, um, is also my armor. And I don't know why anybody would go anywhere else, to be honest with you. I feel like it's all I've got. So when I'm in... That's all you need. That's all we need. So whether we're joyful or sad or scared or whatever it might be, that's always where I go. God has been with us the whole time. Well, we're so thankful that you've come home to the church, that you've carried on that tradition, that you're both sets of parents started, that your children see that. Uh, we'll tell the viewers the good news that Raymond is great right now. Praise God. Yeah. Uh, that was an outcome. It couldn't have been, but that was the outcome he chose for Raymond's life and for yours, and we praise God for that. And we're so grateful that you're paying it forward, praying for others and helping other marriages. We're so thankful you said yes to God. Welcome home. Thanks Thank so much. You. Let's talk about transformational habits for our spiritual lives. When we talk about the spiritual life, what do we mean? It's the drama going on within our own souls. Have you ever thought about the spiritual life like that? It really is dramatic. There are so many ups and downs, so much mystery, and at the heart of it all is this intensely intimate relationship with someone you can't even physically see, but with whom you hopefully have a relationship of the deepest love you've ever had. The way you live and grow in your spiritual life is the way in which you participate in this dramatic story going on in your own soul. But your spiritual life doesn't just impact you. The saints had a profound understanding of how this immersion into the drama in their souls could affect the story that God was writing with the whole world. 
The simplest tuning in to this bigger story with a heart open to following the next prompting of the Holy Spirit can powerfully transform one's spiritual life and help draw the soul closer to God while bringing others closer to Him too. Saint Zélie Martin is one of my favorite examples of this. So many of us can relate to the simplicity of her life, but she lived this ordinary life with extraordinary virtue. She stayed at home and she raised holy children. She had a holy sacrificial marriage and she suffered with quiet strength and trust. One day she saw a woman and children traveling at a train stop and altered the course of her plans that day to help them get where they needed to go. It was the small, mundane, ordinary things of life that allowed St. Zaley to enter into the story that God was trying to write on her soul. Her spiritual life told a story to the world about God's love for her and the power of listening to the Holy Spirit. And look at the impact her story had on the spiritual lives of her family members. Her husband and daughter are canonized saints as well. Every day is a new opportunity to enter into the drama of your spiritual life, to participate in God's story for you, which will impact so many others. How can you tune in to the working of the Holy Spirit in your life more this week? Here's your opportunity to grow in faith and help Jesus save souls. Visit our catholicscomehome.org website and click on the shop tab. Here, you can discover our four brand new popular books to help you and those you love grow closer to Christ. The Willpower Advantage, Building Habits for Lasting Happiness, includes a personal spiritual audit and a customized plan to help you fight lifelong vices and find freedom in Christ. One Moment Can Change a Soul helps you guide family and friends home to the Catholic faith. Plus, two beautifully illustrated children's books to help your children or grandchildren stay close to Jesus. Epic, the story of Jesus' Holy Catholic Church and Santa's Priority, keeping Christ in Christmas. You can also order a car magnet to evangelize in traffic, evangelization cards, and DVDs with all of our best episodes of our international television series. If you have a question or want to tell us how Catholics Come Home has blessed someone you know, or you can financially help us blitz the secular airwaves with these powerful evangelicals, contact us at info at catholicscomehome.org or by mail. Catholics Come Home, P.O. Box 1802, Roswell, Georgia 30077. Please help Jesus save more souls. Mike, now a global VP of sales, was raised as a diehard Protestant who always sought God. Lori, once a Maronite Catholic, drifted from organized religion in college, yet never left God. But God had a plan when he brought them together in college. After years of prayer and study, their faith journey led Mike into the Catholic Church and Lori home to the Eucharist. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Catholics Come Home. Please keep the Carleton family and all of us at Catholics Come Home in your prayers. Remember to fulfill your role in the new evangelization by helping to love somebody to heaven. I